Here's a practical application of using pressure. Vapor pressure. Now as you know, below the boiling point, liquids evaporate, some more than others. Water evaporates pretty well. All you have to do is just take some water and spread it on something and the water disappears. Now it doesn't really disappear, it turns into a vapor. That's called evaporation. Now when the liquid evaporates, the vapor that's formed exerts pressure as the vapor molecules collide off of container walls. When you seal a liquid in a container, it will continue to evaporate until the air in the sealed container reaches what's called vapor-liquid equilibrium. In other words, once the inside of the container, the air in there has reached saturation or 100% humidity, at that point, you're at equilibrium where the rate of condensing, this is condensation here, equals the rate of evaporating. And when you hit that point, you can record the pressure, and that pressure is called the vapor pressure. The pressure exerted by a gas at vapor liquid equilibrium. If you want to find out what that vapor pressure is, there's vapor pressure data for four liquids on reference table H. We'll take a look at that in a moment. To find the vapor pressure, just look up the given temperature, go to the liquids line, and shoot across to the vapor pressure. This is reference table H. It gives you the vapor pressure in kilopascals of these four liquids as they evaporate at different temperatures. If we want to find the vapor pressure of ethanol at a temperature of 30 degrees, we start with 30 degrees, we go up to the line that says ethanol, and then we shoot across to the y-axis and read that information. Now you notice 30 is here. On the x-axis, this is 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So the, so the interval is going up by 5's on the x-axis. But on this axis, here's 0, here's 50, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So that's about 10 kilopascals. What's the vapor pressure of water at a temperature of 85 degrees Celsius? 75, 80, 85. We go up to the line that says water. Bop, 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 bop. That puts it right here. And then we shoot across to the y-axis. That puts it about here. It looks like about 56 or 57 kilopascals would be our vapor pressure. When a liquid boils, what do you see? Bubbles! The reason you see bubbles is because when a liquid boils, not just the surface molecules escape, like an evaporation, but there's actually bubbles forming within the liquid itself. Now normally, atmospheric pressure would prevent those bubbles from forming. As soon as they form, it'd be like sitting on a balloon, which just squashes back down again. But when a liquid's vapor pressure is high enough, at least as high as the outside pressure, then those bubbles can form and survive float to the surface, burst, and release all their vapor. That's what boiling is. Boiling is when all the molecules have enough energy to escape, and it escapes in the form of vapor bubbles. Blah, 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 blah. So how do you know when a liquid has enough vapor pressure to form vapor bubbles that will survive? To find the boiling point, you look up the pressure, then you go across to the liquid line that you're interested in, and then down to the temperature, and that's the boiling point temperature. Now what that means is that if you raise the pressure, it's going to be harder for those vapor bubbles to form, and therefore the boiling point will go higher, because you're going to need to heat the molecules more to exert more pressure to overcome all that excess pressure. This is how a pressure cooker works. Normally, water boils at 100 degrees. But if you put your food in with the water, let's say rice, beans, or whatever, and then you've got a ceiling ring and a lid that goes on here, when you heat it, the water evaporates before it boils. That evaporating water is going to exert vapor pressure, and pressure will build up inside of the pressure cooker. When the pressure builds up, the water's going to have to work much harder to get to a boiling temperature. So the boiling point will rise. Now remember, when you hit the boiling point, the temperature stays the same. So if you're boiling pasta, for example, you can't get it to boil any at a hotter temperature because temperature's going to stay at 100 degrees until you're finished boiling. But if you increase the pressure, you have to raise the temperature even higher to get it to boil. 
since it's boiling at a higher temperature, your food cooks quicker. And that's the purpose of a pressure cooker. On the other hand, as the pressure exerted on the liquid decreases, the boiling point decreases. This is why there's no liquid water, at least none that we've found so far, on the surface of Mars. You see, Mars has an atmospheric pressure of between about 2 and 3 kilopascals. In other words, about 2% of Earth's atmospheric pressure. On Mars, there isn't enough pressure to keep water a liquid. Therefore, the second it gets warm enough for water to turn from ice to a liquid, it's immediately going to boil off as a gas. So you will not find liquid water on Mars. On Mars, water is dry ice. So what is the boiling point of water under a pressure of 120 kilopascals? 120 kilopascals, we go across to water, that puts us right here. We drop down, that puts us right here. It's about 104 degrees Celsius. By raising the pressure up to 120 kilopascals, we can actually make our boiling point go up from 100 to about 104. And you're cooking at a hotter temperature. What is the boiling point of propanone under a pressure of 40 kilopascals? 40 kilopascals, we go to propanone, that's right here, and then we drop down, let's see, 25, 30, that's about 31 to 32 degrees Celsius would be the boiling point of propanone under that pressure. Notice that as we increase the pressure, we are also going to increase the boiling point temperature. If you want to find the normal boiling point, that's the boiling point under standard or normal pressure. Normal pressure is 101.3 kilopascals. So you just take a look at this dashed line, and wherever your liquid line intersects the standard pressure line, whatever temperature that gives you, that's going to be your normal boiling point for that liquid. As the pressure drops, the boiling point drops. As the pressure goes up, the boiling point goes up. 